So this chapter of Magi definitely was bringing a little bit more mystique to the Dark Continent because prior to this, I just assumed, okay, mainly that is the home of the finalists and that's about it. I mean, I was assuming what else could be down there, but it just continues to be more mysterious because according to what the Mother Dragon said in this chapter, basically it's the same world, but then at the same time it almost is different because Chudara isn't able to use his magic, this, that, and the third. So definitely building up even more regarding the Dark Continent. And I think the Dark Continent possibly could be some sort of crack in between the dimensions, basically how it was explained that, you know, there's different dimensions, but they're literally on the same playing field. Maybe the Dark Continent could actually be the one crack where you can go in between those different dimensions because it's just this big Big gaping hole. I mean, the Dark Continent, if I'm correct, did exist in Almataran as well. So maybe not only is it a gateway, but it's also a gateway in between dimensions. And one of the things the chapter definitely did, because I mean, last time I talked about Alibaba and Judar, I was disappointed this, that, and the third. But I definitely got to say that one of the things that this chapter did is it brought forth something that I'm really hoping is going to be a major play to Alibaba. Based on what was said in this chapter, he's been away for, in his time anyway, where he was at a hundred plus years so that could be great things in giving Alibaba the power he needs to be independent to not have to kiss after ass after ass and jump ships because prior to this whole debacle that he had he was basically like well I either kiss Cohen's ass or kiss Sinbad's ass I have no other choice but if he had this experience a hundred plus years if he comes back and he has these new powers and he knows all this different magic and whatnot, he could be a huge force to be reckoned with. So big development in a very strange way. So I'm actually warming more up to the idea of what's been going on. I've seen them this soon. Granted, yeah, it would have been a little bit more of a shock value them coming back later on. But if he's had this much development, a hundred fucking years, that's going to be a big play into hopefully making Alibaba be able to say, let's just say the co-empire goes down next time or Sinbad. He's not going to have to to say okay well yes master get on my knees maybe he'll be able to be just strong on his own and create an army that is able to rival those of the threats that he had and also this chapter was showcasing a little bit of development on Judar's side as well because when it first started he was like pampered and like make my bath for me this and you know whatnot but now he's kind of like just putting himself in the fucking water oh my gosh there's water stuff like that you know he's slowly changing but I definitely feel hopefully the mother dragon says something or something within this journey is a huge change to Judar so that he just doesn't continue where he's been because up until this point I mean he's still like I'm gonna kill I don't give a fuck and he's still Judar, the, the evilness is still there, but something has to happen to make him open up his eyes and realize, okay, I, I need a change, and it's either going to be that, or Judar is going to be a dick through to the end and still be an asshole, but I think this journey definitely should hopefully provide the development that Judar finally needs to pick the side that he kind of really wants to pick, even though he's been on this, I don't give a fuck, and him and Hakuriyu were like two devils and whatnot, I think this journey can change his outlook on things, and when he gets back, if Hakuriyu was dead for some reason, maybe he can stand on his own and figure out where he really needs to be and not just be this carnage disaster maker. And a little bit of setup as well with the shadow of darkness slowly creeping into this world, I mean... You gotta wonder, why would this mother dragon say that when one of the biggest things that was bringing forth that was Gyokuen? Gyokuen and Altharmon were that negative energy. So if Gyokuen's been seemingly vanquished and Altharmon pretty much is no more at this point because they were just like following Hakuryu's lead, but they're not really the threat that they once were where is this energy continuing to come from? Because you would think it would be vanquished at that point. So either Gyokuen is still alive and kicking, or people that are falling into depravity are continuing to add more to the shadow of darkness. And with all that being said, honestly, it was a good chapter for the most part of Magi. I'd say 7 out of 10. It gave a little bit of good stuff mainly, I felt, and it actually got me a little bit happy and excited because I haven't been that fond of it lately with Alibaba. Like, he could come back and be so fucking awesome. I mean, depending on what he's learned, because the Mother Dragon described it as he's like young, but he has like the mind of a sage at this point or something, you know, something there, an old sage. This could be great things for Alibaba's character development. We're just missing something big to make Judar say, okay, I can't do this. Either it's going to happen during this journey, or he's going to get back and realize that hakuryu has been defeated, or maybe he'll show up just when Hakuryu is being killed, something along the lines of that, because... I still say that Hakuri was gonna die at some given point. I just don't see him returning to redemption, especially as dark as him and Judar went. Judar, he was already always a dark asshole, but Hakuri, you know, he went, he plunged down into the depths of it, and I think there could be some 
consequences to Hak Ryu's actions that will ultimately change Judar, but we just gotta wait and see. And overall, again, a good chapter for the most part. Mainly set up and giving a little bit more intriguingness to Alibaba's journey and just what has he been doing from the time that he died and then he met up with Judar. There's a lot of different things that I'm really excited to see. Hopefully when he comes back to his body, which we know at this point, it's almost a guarantee he's gonna come back. He just has boss type status where he can rival that of maybe even Sinbad who the fuck knows but let me know what you guys think of this chapter first of all do you think that the dark continent could potentially be a split in dimensions so that way they could cross over and the mother dragon's gonna give him that info also could Alibaba's 100 years that he's been wherever the fuck he was at be a huge asset to giving him more power so that way he can kind of be independent and not be, you know, oh, Cohen, I love them booty cheeks. And do you think that Judar is going to have some sort of shocking revelation that's going to change him or he's going to have to see something like Hakuryu's stuff to really make him say, I need to start figuring out the real way I should be. Your overall thoughts of the chapter, Magi. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes next week because I like these chapters where it really gives you more information and it's interesting information and not just politics. But that's all I have for this review. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you liked anything I had to say or enjoyed the video, drop me a like. I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed, if you could do so as well, that'd be amazing. I'm from the world. And as always, people, have an awesome day.